For those of you who can't wait for Volume 3 of Mystical Force, The Cold Re and The Cold R, well, you don't really need to wait anymore because the book's already out. But at the time I originally posted this, July 25th, 2021, the book wasn't out yet. So here's a sneak peek at Book 3 of Mystical Force, The Cold Re and The Cold R, or in this case, uh, well, I guess still a sneak peek if you haven't already bought the book. Location base of the Koldar Warriors, Planet Thalia. The base of the Koldar Warriors was old and run down. It once belonged to an ancient cult that worshipped nature, similar to the ancient tribe that taught Princess Alderoth. What became of this tribe, however, was lost to history. The Koldar Warriors didn't know and didn't care. As far as they were concerned, if this tribe no longer existed, it simply meant that they were too weak to defend themselves in their home. This was the philosophy of the Koldar warriors. The strong survive, the weak perish. This particular group of Koldar warriors had originally been Tamman knights who willingly followed Master Daisho after he had been expelled from the Alderoth branch. Like him, they foolishly believed themselves to be true Tamman knights, while Daisho's original mission had been to destroy the false Tamman knights, the Kamatra sect. They had allowed their self-righteous prejudice to expand until they saw all other religions as false and all other people as infidels to either be converted to their religion or to be destroyed. This was their new mission, to spread their teachings across the galaxy and to force everyone to convert to their religion, whether they wanted to or not. They wanted to build a galaxy-spanning theocratic empire. This was how they ended up inadvertently playing a part in both Zolita and Nightwalker's game. They had learned about the same magic spell Zolita used to send Shiria to Earth, and they were planning to use it to spread their teachings across the galaxy. As far as the governments of Thalia and the other worlds of the Galactic Alliance were concerned, the Koldar warriors were criminals and terrorists. If any of them were discovered on any alien worlds, the authorities would have them arrested on sight. While the Koldar warriors' powers gave them an advantage over ordinary species, beings with a mystical force, such as mages, could hold their own against them. If they could gain access to the same magic Zolita used, they would be able to travel instantaneously to any world in the galaxy covertly, and once they were entrenched in said world, it would be very difficult for the authorities to have them removed. In the original timeline that Scarlet Nightwalker came from, the cult found this spell five years ago. It was around the same time that Kurai had been taken. Having another Taman apprentice from the false Taman branch convert to their true religion was a pleasant bonus for them. When Shiria went to rescue her sister, the Koldar warriors used Shiria as a test subject. They used the spell to send her off to a remote corner of the galaxy, not knowing where she'd end up and not really caring. They never knew she ended up on Earth, trained an apprentice of her own, only to die with Tokajin and Nunian. They never knew about the future that Nightwalker had come from. They never knew because Nightwalker had traveled back in time to prevent this incident from happening. Using the same concealment Zolita used at the police station, coupled with the potion Nightwalker used at the station, she convinced the Tamman Knights to follow Shiria and rescue Kurai thus preventing this cult from sending Shiria to Earth. Nightwalker then used her magic to take the spell and destroy it so that it would never fall into their hands. No one knew that Scarlet Nightwalker had been there the whole time, making sure that history didn't repeat itself. The only one who knew the truth was Zolita. Thanks to Nightwalker, the future had been altered, so Zolita was determined to make Nightwalker's job as difficult as possible. Using her magic, Zolita teleported directly into the central chamber of the Temple of the Koldar Warriors. Unlike Scarlet Nightwalker five years earlier, Zolita didn't bother to conceal herself. She wanted them to know of her arrival. Thus, the Koldar Warriors were genuinely surprised when this strange woman magically appeared before them. An intruder! one of the warriors shouted. Trespassing in our sacred halls is an act of sacrilege! another called out. The various other members all murmured in agreement. 
Using the same Taman alchemy that the Taman knights possessed, they created various melee weapons. They moved towards Zolita, preparing to attack. Zolita simply waved her hand and lifted each of them up in the air and hurled them backwards with her magic. Some slammed into the walls, others into each other. Master Shoto, the current leader of this cult, was the only one not affected by this. He was a middle-aged man, though years of relying on the power of the Koldar began taking its toll on his body. His hair, what little he had of it left, was gray. His face was pale and pockmarked, his skin was saggy and wrinkled, and his purple eyes were bloodshot with dark circles surrounding them. He looked as though he hadn't slept for days. Despite this, he was still quite muscular, though it wasn't noticeable as he wore a bulky suit of metallic armor over a black silk dress shirt and baggy black trousers tucked into heavy black leather boots. He simply stood watching. Using the power of the Taman, he tried to read her, just as Shiria had when she first encountered her. All he sensed from her was her presence, nothing more. Zolita turned to face him. If your followers are finished making fools of themselves, perhaps we could talk. Various Koldar warriors slowly got to their feet, weapons at the ready. But Shoto, without taking his eyes off Zolita, simply raised his left hand. The Koldar warriors stopped in their tracks. Obviously, Zolita's power had piqued his curiosity, so he was willing to hear what she had to say. Who are you? he demanded. My name is Zolita, she responded. I'm a sorceress. Beyond that, who I am and where I'm from is of no importance to you. And what is it that you want? The question isn't what I want, she corrected, but what is it that you want? I know about your history, Master Shoto, how over a hundred years ago, Master Kamatra left the Alderoth branch of the Tamanites and formed the Kamatra branch. How Master Daisho saw these heretics as traitors who distorted the teachings of the Taman Knights, and how the rest of the fools on the Taman Council kowtowed to the Thalian government, too afraid to stand up to them. They were fools, Shoto barked. Cowards! Too spineless to see that Kamatra was a traitor and that his followers were perverting the teachings of the Taman Knights. Master Daisho knew this, but the rest of them couldn't see beyond their own selfish needs the need to appease the government, to remain in their good graces, because they were afraid of losing their favor with the government. A true Taman Knight wouldn't submit to the whims of the ignorant masses. He'd use his superior skills and intellect to make them see they're the ones who are wrong, that they're the ones who must be forced to submit to the enlightened. Zolita smiled subtly. It was just as she hoped. Like Nightwalker had done earlier at the police station, she used the same magic potion to make the Koldar warriors more susceptible to her suggestion. Of course, there was the risk that, like Shiria, the Koldar warriors might realize what was going on. The Koldar senses might warn them something was off, but this was less likely to happen. Unlike the Taman Knights, these Koldar warriors were ruled by their emotions, their passion, their aggression. This made them easier to manipulate, as long as Zolita told them what they wanted to hear, they'd be more inclined to do as she said. Strong emotions often tended to cloud one's better judgment. By appealing to their arrogant assumption that they were true Taman Knights, a lie that they had successfully fooled themselves into believing, by telling them what they wanted to hear, she could make them do whatever she wanted. All she had to do was make them believe it was their idea. Just as you do, Zolita soothed, appealing to his ego. Unfortunately, when the enlightened are greatly outnumbered by the ignorant masses, it's hard to make them see the light. Which brings me to why I'm here. Do you remember how five years ago you were searching for an ancient spell, one that would allow you to instantly teleport anywhere in the galaxy without using the gateways and going through official channels at Arathos? Shoto nodded. He remembered the incident perfectly. Normally, beings were forced to use their planet's gateway to travel to the central hub on the planet Arathos. Without such gateways, the only way to travel from one planet to another was via a spaceship equipped with a means to travel faster than light. 
Since Shoto and his band of Koldar warriors were labeled as terrorists, they were banned from leaving Thalia. Even if they had managed to gain access to Thalia's gateway, make it to Arathos, then travel to another world, the authorities would be alerted. Thus they'd be forced to fight off hordes of Tamman knights or other mages who would try and stop them. However, if they had the means to bypass the planetary gateways, they could sneak onto various alien worlds, spread their doctrine, recruit new followers, all the while conquering and subjugating other infidels. And by the time the Tamman knights or other planetary governments realized what was going on, they would already be too deeply entrenched to be removed. This was their plan. Shoto heard rumors about such an ancient spell, one thought to have been lost centuries ago. He had his minions searching Thalia for any relics that supposedly held clues as to how to find or perform this spell. It was five years ago that he had been close to finding it when one of his followers had tried to recruit a Tamman apprentice named Kurai. However, it turned out to be an ambush by the Tamman knights. At least, he believed it to be one. Kurai's fellow apprentices, Shiria and Rurk, along with their master Kalai Udon and the rest of the Kamatra sect, followed her and ambushed his followers. With their plans discovered, Shoto and his followers were forced to go into further hiding. You remember how the Kamatra sect found out about your group and stopped you? What you didn't realize was that a sorceress named Scarlet Nightwalker was behind it all, Zolita lied. The truth was that originally, Shoto and his cult found the spell when Shiria showed up to try and rescue Karai. In the process, Shiria was sent to Earth. This was how events unfolded in the timeline Nightwalker originally came from. When Nightwalker later traveled back in time to alter history, she made sure to prevent the Koldar warriors from finding the spell. She covertly made sure the rest of the Tamman Knights followed Shiria to stop this cult and prevent Shiria from coming to Earth. Unaware of this, Shoto and his followers were forced to go back into hiding and continue their futile search. So they continued searching caves and other ancient archaeological sites for any relics that could help them. One such site was a cave, the very cave Shiria had been assigned to guard three months ago. Shoto had hired Deadeye to search and steal any relics in said cave in the hopes that there might be something there he could use to bring him one step closer to his power. Unfortunately, none of the relics there were of any use to him. Scarlet Nightwalker used this spell to send Deadeye and a Tamman knight named Shiria to a planet called Earth, Zolita continued lying. With them out of the way, she took the ancient scrolls the spell was written on and hid them away to ensure no one would ever find them. Surely with your powers, you know this to be true. Shoto reached out with the power of the Koldar to see if she was lying. Unfortunately, Zolita's magic, combined with the potion, allowed her to manipulate him easily. Using her magic, she allowed his retrocognitive abilities to see un events unfold the way she wanted him to see, not what really happened. So this Scarlet Nightwalker is to blame for all our failures at procuring this spell, Shoto incorrectly deduced. Indeed she is, Zolita said, and continued spinning her elaborate web of lies. What's more, she's from the future. Originally you succeeded in obtaining this spell and spread your empire across the galaxy. She's traveled back in time to prevent this from happening. What? Shoto shouted, his anger building up inside him. You succeeded in your mission, Zolita continued, until she came back in time, altered history, and undid all of your successes. That's why I'm here. I've also come back in time to try and stop her and try and set history right once again. Shoto stood up and roared, This Scarlet Nightwalker will pay for her actions! A faint but sinister smile crept up in the corner of Zolita's lips. In the future, I am but one of your many followers, she continued weaving her misleading tales. My magic, combined with your powers, can overpower her. Together we can set things right. Shoto smiled at her. Despite his arrogant belief in his superiority, Zolita had successfully played him like a fool. Bring me this Nightwalker and the spell, Miss Zolita, and I shall not forget your loyalty when we conquer the galaxy. 
Yes, master, she said, bowing. And I know exactly how to bring her to you. To find out what happens next, keep an eye out for Mystical Force Volume 3, The Colry and the Coldar. Coming soon... Well, not really coming soon. It's already out. So, to find out what happens next, buy a copy of the book. And don't forget to give it a good review. Please, 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 please give it a good review. I need all the good reviews I can get. Oh, and while we're at it, keep an eye out for Volume 4 of Mystical Force. Many are 1 and 1 is 0. Coming soon.